Alex, do you want to tell us a little bit about your research? Yeah, thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, actually, you've already told everything, which will be your continent. presentation. Yeah, this is my presentation. I do <laughs> we have a round of applause. Alex Schindler, he's done. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, um, um, I'm glad to give you an um, introduction into my f uh, field of research, which is called visual music computing. And uh, yeah, as, as Andrew said, visual music is, is everything that is related to music which can't be heard but be, can be seen. And this, this imagination of mu uh, music genres, types of people that are listening to music, that is, that is apparent to us, and we can do this. We can estimate the, the music taste of a person within seconds. So there's information available that can be that can be extracted and can be used computationally. So, but what is visual music? We've talked about this now. It all started about. Uh, it all started with music genres, which are some abstract terms that are used to describe music, and and everybody has a key understanding of music genres, and, and they were used to, to guide us in, in music in record stores to get us faster to the music that we should buy. But even if we have uh, identified our genre, our side genre, there are lots of, of albums, there are a lot of records, and imagine if they all look the same, how can you identify your decide music? So that's when album covers come into play. And I really like that uh, the phrase, as I once read it, that cover art is a monomic to the, the music hidden in, a, in an album. So music, the album covers try to give us information about the mood of a record, the style, the performing artist, or the genre. And that, as can be seen here in this, in this uh, collections of music genres, there are some visual guidelines that are followed, that have been developed over time. Like in music videos, music video directors have developed uh, like a visual language of music, which is how I call it. And by applying to this uh, visual language of music, it's possible to identify the genre of music videos only by watching them without hearing the sound. Because there are some guidelines that are always followed and that we, we also expect them to be. We would be really surprised to find uh, Ozzy Osbourne wearing some baseball cap and hip hop outfit performing uh, Black Sabbath songs. So now that's what I'm doing, I'm doing the computing stuff. And just one use case is music recommendation. So which music would you recommend to this guy? Uh, which possibilities do we have? There is. We could, we could simply ask, and that's, that's really state of the art. Uh, music recommendation systems require or uh, need to, to be supplied with some, some background information. They ask you for your favorite genre, your favorite artist, some favorite songs. They're constantly trying to get feedback from you to, to create recommendations, playlists, radios. Another state of the art approach is to supply example songs. And based on an example song, you can create, sim you can search for similar songs based on some uh, rhythmic or timbral uh, properties, and then you retrieve a playlist or music recommendation. Another thing is you can get the digital history of this guy. This is what Spotify, Last.fm is doing. They're constantly recording and, and storing your data, what you have been listening, where have you clicked. And another thing is you could ask friends. It's also done by Spotify, Last.fm. It's called collaborative filtering. It's like on Amazon. People who listen to this song also like this song. But again, we start all over again. We have to know what are people listening to, what are your friends listening to. But in this case, we only have a picture of a guy. And I guess everybody in this room knows what music we should play for him just by, just by watching him. So there is information. And I'm convinced that, that state-of-the-art image processing and visual computing technologies are able to extract this information. Um, visual music analysis the, uh, can... Uh, I, I'm now giving some examples of, of those tools, like structuring videos. There's 
music segmentation is one tool to, to find uh, properties of music, to find similarities. And there are music, there are also segmentation in music videos. And you can try to uh, do shot detection to find the complexity of a music video and try to correlate this with music, with the sound. And music indexing is also another problem where the, the only audio based solutions are not really working, like artist identification. Artists have a wide range of styles. They on, on, on one record, they have slow songs, they have fast songs, and state-of-the-art uh, audio-based technologies to identify artists really have poor performance. And what I did is I applied uh, face recognition algorithms on music videos, and I was able to enhance the, the performance of artist identification on music video uh, data sets. So this was, this was a great experience, although there, there are really great obstacles in, in uh, face recognition concerning that artists never look directly into the camera, which they're supposed to according to researchers. And the biggest problem was that they're singing and face recognition algorithms required to look like a, similar to a pass photo. So then you have best performance. And as you can see, they're constantly singing, so we should tell them about, them, about this problem. But as I told you, better performance using uh, visual technology. Another thing is effective music analysis. And this, this is a very, very interesting and exciting topic to get the mood out of, of music, of visual music. So the effects of, of music on, on visual perceptions are known. It's, it's every time you see a horror movie, you, you have the impression it's better with music than without. But the, on, on the other side around, the effects of visual stimuli on music perceptions, that's a completely new field and there aren't really many results, but they will be necessary for, for a wide range of, of exploiting this visual music computing. There are some, some basic research results that found correlations between color and moods and emotions, and that have been replicated now uh, previously, very uh, recently, uh, with a complete data set and they did, uh, did uh, brain scans and provided this as data set. So I hope there will be, will be more going on in, in the next, in the near future. So, but also from, from color and, and uh, luminance information, you can extract inf uh, emotion uh, effect data. It's here on the side, you have effect and arousal, here you have the color which can be extracted and all this can be used to, to classify, to uh, calculate similarities, to calculate mood. Semantic analysis. This is a, a very exciting topic where objects are really recognized in images or in video sequences and this is a, a bleeding edge object recognition paper it's not a music, but the, for one test, they used on stage. Oops, that's too wrong. They used one on stage music videos recordings, and they were able to identify guitars, microphones, uh, spots on the top. The, I think the drums in the background. So that's really exciting. And when you look at music videos, there are reoccurring concepts. This visual language of music, the rock music. Uh, frequently shows uh, the, the instruments, the, the, the guys playing in hip hop. There's the, the baseball caps in dance music. They're sh really showing off with glamour and uh, so on. And when, you, when we identify all this, then we can use this in daily life. And that's, that's my 50-year my vision that we use like our cell phone to take a picture of a, of a scene, of a moment, or to use, Im imagine you have, a, you have a pub and all those surveillance cameras. And if you could use those surveillance cameras to identify people like him or other people and, and you can estimate a playlist or music recommendation based on visual perception, I think that would be a great, a great addition to all these technologies we've developed so far. So, um, and now, and now this is now demonstrated. I did this on, on one afternoon. It's like, I call it automatically music video generation. And this is really, really easy. Like, like before, you use shot recognition, you slice your video in, into the small segments, and then you 
extract some some features like written, timbre from each segment, and you do this for a huge set with different genres. And what you then get is a reference, a mapping between small audio snippets to small video snippets. And when you then have a, when you then have a um, song that you want a video for it, then you do it again. You, you slice it into the little segments, and then you have your, your mapping, and then you know this, this uh, Audios, this, this little audio snippet sounds similar to this snippet, and this is this video segment. And you do this again and again, and at the end you merge it all together. And then you come up with this. And this is a song taken from the free music archive without video, and this video was automatically generated from a set of different genres with reggae, rap, uh, dance music. And it generally takes some, some metal strips. Sometimes there's some reggae in it. But that's, I think that's not bad for an afternoon, and it's a really good demonstration which, uh, which possibilities visual computing can bring to, to music technology. Just one last point. Uh, just because it uses uh, image technology, but it's a real old and traditional uh, topic. It's um, symbolic music uh, processing, like you know, there's this, this uh, technology called optical music recognition, where you can uh, transform scanned uh, pages of, of printed mu of printed scores into a processable format like MIDI. And optical music recognition works really great currently for printed music, but it really, really suffers or it fails on handwritten text. And this is a project we've done the last three years for digital preservation, where we try to identify duplicated pages in, in huge image collections. And this can be applied to, to music scores and identify correlations, properties. So I just present this to think outside the box. It's not always the traditional, so you can use new technology to find new ways of, of performing currently unsolvable tasks. And one further thing, what you can do with optical music recognition, once you have the MIDI data, you can use this to visualize things, and this is uh, something which I'm currently working on. It's for the Europeana Sounds project. The Europeana, sound, the Europeana is a virtual library where many partners are contributing content to it. And for the European Sounds project, it's, it can be described as a, a sound cloud for the digital heritage of Europe. So you can go to, this, to the European Sounds interface, a website, and can query all those uh, sounds archives from, from Europe in one, one single interface. And one thing that I'm contributing to is this mapping between sound recordings that you can hear and printed scores that have been scanned and uploaded to your European sounds. And while the music is playing, this media information that has been extracted from OMR is uh, processed and the, the single measures that are currently played are highlighted. So visual music computing can also be uh, used for, for visualization, like improving uh, stage lighting by uh, those, those relations that I've mentioned before between music, mood, and color. So uh, to summarize why, why I've been on giving this talk, because there's little research going on in, the, uh, in this uh, field, and I just wanted to, to promote the, the uh, the possibilities and, and the potential of this field. And I hope you really enjoyed my examples. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Alex. Thank you.